Welcome to episode 81 of Both Down, the number one Blood Bowl podcast. In all of Iowa, it's the best Blood Bowl podcast in Iowa. It is possibly the first time we've had a point of contention. No. Other it, people might think differently. Um, We'll get to that later. I am Scott Prime, and with me is Steve Kilowoggy Campbell. Hello. He's the master of disaster. I am the wizard of blizzards. Wow. The ice cream blizzard? Or just oh, from like, Dairy Queen? Yeah. So <laughs> Dairy Queen needs a wizard? They should. Would he be the Dairy King? The Dairy King. No, the blizzard is the blizzard wizard is trying to kidnap the queen. Kidnap the queen. So like if you're King not Adventure Time. In probably southern uh, United States. You're probably not familiar with Dairy Queen, right? Isn't this a southern Probably United States thing? Anyways, it's a fast food place that has decent ice cream at times. Yeah. Depends their, what you order. Their main claim to fame is the blizzard, which is served upside down. And it really pisses me off when they do that. Here so, you go, sir. Upside down. Oh, it makes me so mad. I always tell the guy, don't do that. And he's like, we have to. Sorry, you sir. Might, sorry, you might be the secret customer. It's better than Raising Cane's. Raising Cane's is a fried chicken place, of which we have 45 around us. And <laughs> anytime you go there... It's, uh, what is it? Chicken, chicken, chicken. What number are you picking? Or so, something like that. You know, some stupid phrase that they have to say every time someone comes through drive through. Yeah, it's pretty annoying. Anyways, we're not here to discuss food, although that will yeah, be are. talked about a lot in this episode. We are here to talk about some Blood Bowl. So, besides our main topic, have you played any other Blood Bowl outside of what we're going to talk about today? I have not. I've I've been busy with house stuff and overtime and haven't really been feeling playing Blood Bowl. I know you're retired like from our league. I am stepping down for at least a month or so and well, you're taking over. Right. Well, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> you have a house that you should be closing soon. End of the month, June 29th. Ooh. And that's still going smooth. I got notice today that the roof should be fixed this week. They went out and sprayed for carpenter ants and everything is going according to schedule that's pretty awesome so i'll be roommateless really soon no you won't <laughs> i mean it's gonna take me a while to get stuff done over there i, I really i, I kind of want you out like as soon as you sign i want you should start staying the night over there it's a possibility <laughs> it depends that. on when i get the internet <clears throat> And uh, washer and dryer and stuff like that. No, I got you. I'm just kind of teasing you. But no, uh, you won't be alone long because, as we said before, I'm out and your girlfriend, Jen, is moving in with her kids. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) So that'll be fun. Right now, she's listening going, what does that mean? Mm. (laughs) I'm going to send him a text message. (laughs) Because she listens to the podcast. (laughs) Nah, she's cool. I know. Uh, Yeah, we are... Golly, if you just want to hear about our life, you're going to hear it today. But that's, um, that's what people come here for. It's not Blood Bowl. It's Stephen <laughs> Scott's show. <laughs> I guess so. With a little bit of Blood Bowl sprinkled in. Yeah, it's sometimes. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of like the main course is Blood Bowl when you get to it. But there's a lot of like servings of other stuff. I mean, really, this is the last time we should be recording here. I know, in the studio. It's going away. No, in the kitchen. <laughs> I will soon be actually having a studio. That's so the plan. My my point was is yesterday we went to Lowe's and picked out paint. You and Jen? And my mother. Oh, okay. And it was a long process. It was painful. Shouldn't be that long. Uh, well, the, the lady who was helping us was knowledgeable, but she was odd. So that's the best way I can describe it. I don't know if she really wanted to help us or not, but like she was forced <laughs> to. And then like her opinion was very stern on like what we should do. I don't know. It was, it was very o- awkward, but we went through the process. House paint is way more expensive than I thought. What, now I'm sure $30 it's gone a gallon? Up. Oh, we paid like $45 a gallon. You better have got some really good stuff then. Supposedly, we got the stuff that you can paint with like one, one swoop coat. instead of yeah. the one you, other one. You need like three coats. So we're going to see. And it has the built-in primer? Yes. Okay. Well, they didn't sell a lot of options. But anyways, so yeah, that's the next process. And then um, 
I guess I guess that's it. And in, in the meantime, we're about to start the Blood Bowl League at Wizards Asylum. After a month and a half. <laughs> well, we finished. It should have started in May. Well, it should have, but the playoffs drifted over, and everybody was busy with finals in school and college. Yeah. And some people, uh, Rod, I believe, was opening up a new restaurant with his business and stuff, uh, or a job. And um, But it looks like we might get a new player out of it. Uh, Drake Smith, who plays cool. Super Show with us at the last Super Show event, pulled me aside and asked me, what? tell me about this Blood Bowl. I'm very interested. And I was like, well, we're about to start a new league. You can come watch and learn yeah. for a few weeks. And if you're interested, borrow a team from me. And then if you like it from there, you can get your own stuff. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, definitely. Um, we need uh, fresh blood. <laughs> we definitely need fresh blood. It would help if we had advertising up at the store or something. So, Well, but we maybe once things get settled into both new houses. Because it kind of feels like I'm getting a new house, too. No. Well, because things are going to change. And I don't like change. No, you don't. I don't. Not at all. And some changes are good. So I'm just going to try to go with the flow the best I can. But, like, I know I'm going to be a stubborn weirdo about certain things. Oh, yeah. For no reason. Like, yeah. Yeah. For real. But that's just me. That's life. Yeah. Besides that, we've traveled to Iowa. Yep. For what would be my, I think, fourth year in a row to... It's just four? I think it's just four. Okay. Because the first year I played dwarves, and you played dwarves. The second year I played vampires. Last year I played halflings, and this year I played corn. So anyways, we are going to probably just have one big giant segment here after this opening, and then we're going to have some shout-outs, but we're going to... Kind of like our Chaos Cup trip, we're going to break down day by day kind of what we did and the fun we had. And uh, you'll find out a little bit more about Cedar Rapids, Iowa than we've ever actually encountered. So. Or really wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, maybe more than you ever wanted to know. And, and then next episode, we should probably get back to some fluff. Yeah, we could talk about some fluff. I heard, the, um, well, we'll get into it later. But um, you have anything else you want to comment on? Has any, any new Blood Bowl news broke or anything uh, like that? Um, I don't think so. Because we covered a lot of it as it broke last time. Drew and I are still going strong on the World Cup report. Right. How's the feedback on that? So far, it's been pretty good. Good. We think we're lining up an interview with someone from Dornburn and then a couple of the people that made the rules. Just a random person from Dornburn? I think a tourism director. Oh. So that should be interesting. That's neat. So he'll say, if you're here, at least hit these four places or whatever. Yeah. That's really neat. Should be fun. Because I want to know those things in case I end up going. Well, hopefully you can. We still have plenty of time. I know. You know what my fear is of the whole thing? Dying horribly in a plane crash over the ocean? <laughs> no, it's not that. It's, <laughs> well, there is that. I was going to say, this should be there. Because if you crash in the ocean, I always think you're still alive when you hit the water, and then that's when things eat you alive. I'm pretty sure you'll die probably from impact. And if not for an impact from drowning. Well, I'd rather die from the impact and not the drowning. Oh, absolutely. That's I would rather we just blow up. Yeah. My, yeah. That's the that's the fastest way. All right. Just yeah. quickly boom. Mm -hmm. No, the worst is But either way, surviving. my luck's going to be, I'm going to be the guy that still is alive and I can feel falling and everything. Mm -hmm. That'd be terrible. Yeah. And you get, get, make your way out of the cabin and you've got your flotation device. And, and you hear like the fish eating us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be awful. Yeah. Uh, it's so weird that you said that because I really did think about that. I was like, but if you how awful would that be? If you survive, you probably get lifetime tickets on that air airline. <laughs> That's, I'm sure I'd fly again after crashing and yeah. surviving <laughs> out in the middle of the ocean. That's, that's a no loss for them. They're like, oh, sorry. Here, you can fly anytime you want. Oh, you mean never? Yeah, we mean never. So. Ay, ay, ay. No, my fear is, is like, Doing pretty good financially, have some good money and savings. Do, do you go blow it on this European trip, which would be a lot of fun? Yeah. But you know how life likes to just kick you in the nuts oh, yeah. as soon as you do something stupid? Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I saw you buy, the, buy that board game. How about a car park go out on you? Yep. And you go, dang it, dang it, life. And then at the same time, I'm torn because it's like you can't live life fearing what's going to happen. You get what I'm saying? To an extent, yeah. 
Because then you would never do anything. Absolutely. My so, backup plan is I have a credit card with enough money on it to pay for everything. I got you. Worst comes to worse, I'll just be paying it off over a long amount of time. <laughs> right. And then would you be mad if you came back and you had a terrible time? I I don't know. I, I shouldn't have a terrible time. I should just enjoy the experience of going someplace new. Sure. But yes, I would be upset if I spent a ton of money and things just went wrong. Like that's kind of a fear I have if of somebody course. tells me they're coming to Oklahoma Bowl for the first time and they're traveling from far away. Yeah. And then you go like, what if the time sucks and they have a terrible time and then they're really regretting it and everything else. So like, I don't know. The things I think about is really stupid, but that's where mm. my mind goes. Anyways, I probably rambled enough. Steve did not ramble enough. Ramble some more. Um, so I don't know what to talk about because I don't really have anything to ramble about. All right. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to save this little segment here. And then we're going to talk about some Iowa and some 3 die Brawl and the Braft. We'll be right back. Sound is brought to you by Wizards Asylum in Norman, Oklahoma. Check out their new location at 3717 West Main or online at wizardsnorman.com. All right, we're back. And now the adventures of Steve Scott and Jen. And Jen. With a little gin on the side. A glass of gin. Come on. I was thinking a gin. You know, a genie. Oh. Wow. That would be so. awesome. Wow. We should have thought of that when we made our Super Show character. It could have been like a genie. Oh, yeah. That's true. I like the other one better, though. I like the other one, too. But anyways. So we left bright and early Thursday morning. Like, super early. It was very early. Like, like 6.30. Yeah. We hit the road at 6.30 in the morning from Oklahoma, hoping to get to Drew's house about, hopefully, 5, 5.30. Yeah, we figured about 6. Goofing off and everything. Depends how much we goofed off. Yeah. So we pick up Jim. We hit the road. She says, storms are coming. And we saw no sign of storms until we hit, what, 45 minutes up the road? I think so. About an hour. Uh, hour. Yeah. Up in Guthrie, if you're familiar with the area past Guthrie. And there was this line of storms. It's like awfully blackout. It was like it was like the source wall, kind of, from DC <laughs> Comics. Yeah. This big wall of the storms coming. And I thought, I can get some really good nerd cred with Jen. And I looked at her, and I said, witness me. And I act like I spray painting my face. And she didn't see the movie. No clue. <laughs> so I have to make sure that she sees some uh, Mad Max Fury Road at some point yeah. in her life. But we traveled into the storm. And on the on the radar, it looked like, yeah, if you just go about 10 minutes or so, it should go past us. No. No. That's not how it worked. It rained really heavy. It hailed. It held heavier. The rain got heavier, and what I didn't tell Steve and Jennifer, who were freaking out, because Steve kept going, you can pull over if you want, and Jen was freaking out. Yeah. I was kind of getting to the point where I was like ready to almost pull over, because it was getting so bad, but I thought we could drive, I thought we could, if we could just get past it. Yeah. I mean, that's what and we figured. one point, I was only going 25 miles an hour. It never felt like you were going that slow. It, I did. Because it felt like... We were going through a car wash <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> well, you couldn't tell because it was the road was really hard to see. Could not see anything in front of us. Now, luckily, I'm using some air quotes. Steve had to poop. And he said, pull over at this. <laughs> no, I saw an exit that had a gas station. I'm like, let's go ahead and just pull off. I do need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and supposedly, he had to air quote poop. He was ducking and covering. There was a restaurant. Because... I wanted to go in and have breakfast. <laughs> no, no, he was ducking and covering because he thought a tornado was going to hit us. No. And me and Jim was stranded out in the car while Steve was safe in the restaurant. I, I thought you guys were actually going to come in. I thought she was too, I actually. went to the bathroom, and then I came out, and there was nobody there. I'm like, oh, okay. We saw a streak of lightning that I'm probably 
exaggerating some, but you know how like lightning flashes and it's quick, but you mm-hmm. can see it. This one felt like it lasted like five seconds. It inside, I could feel the rumble and the lights went out. It yeah, it shut off all the power in the area, and it was just plain as day, mm-hmm. just bold and like holy crap. Eventually, the storm passed us enough. We got back on the road. Another interesting thing about that in the bathroom, they had soap, like a liquid soap, mm-hmm. in like a ketchup container. You know, one of those like ketchup I'm squeeze put bottles. My fries on- like, you know, like a generic squeeze bottle? Yep. It had pink. It was clear, and it had the pink uh, soap in it. That's weird. Which is weird. Very kind of ghetto. And then you know that's never going to get clean because you have to pick it up and squeeze it into your hand. Ooh. Yeah. So Ooh. I made sure to wash my hands really good and then use my shirt to open the door and all. Ooh. Yeah. Well, after he took his scared poop, we hit the road. It scared the shit out of me. <laughs> and it rained like it felt like forever. It, it was a while. It was like a light rain, but, but like yes, forever. it was at least you know you could see. So and so, good. oh, so in the middle of this storm, though, Jen gets an, uh, a warning that says moderate tornadoes possible, and that's that's what freaked her out. Oh yeah, she doesn't like storms at all. But like we made it through there. But then, as we're driving, it just downpoured here where we're from, and like the park we walk at. Has this little tiny creek that runs through it. That thing was up on the, like, what do you call that? The track yeah. where you walk. I mean, which is, what, 10 feet down? Oh, easy, at least. If not more? Yeah. I mean, it was just overflowing. It was crazy. So, the underpass by us was flooded. Yeah, you couldn't get through the road at all. Yeah, it, it got crazy here for a little while. So I keep thinking, like, part of me is like, man, if we would have left at, like, 530, we could have passed it all. But mm-hmm. we probably would have just maybe got hit with it would have ran to something and, else and it would have been dark out and then we right. died then we died um but we knew it wasn't a good sign when all the truckers pulled over yeah if you're ever driving and wondering what to do if just follow a trucker if they pull off go ahead and pull off with them yeah because they probably knew what was coming and we didn't yep. or i didn't listen to be fair now they're going to pull off sooner because they're bigger and more likely to fall over but it's just a good idea so we, we carried on. We went through the state of Kansas. Yeah. Um, we made it. Did we have anything interesting in Kansas? Oh, yeah. My engine light came on. Oh, yeah. Check engine light came on. So we pulled over in a small, not a small town. I don't know. Smallish. I don't even know what it was. Yeah, we pulled over, got my car checked out. There was a part that was a sensor that could Oxygen be fixed center. later. Yeah. So we continued on. We stopped and ate by a suggestion from a friend, Joe Roberts. Remember what that place was called? Q's? I think it was Q39, something or like Q59. that. Or Q59. It was a barbecue place in Kansas City. Uh, he said it was kind of, what do you say, upper? A L- little hoity-toity. Hoity-toity, which means it was a little expensive. Yeah. They had yeah, some. Yeah, it was Q39. Um, Q39. Um, I liked it. I don't know if I liked it better than the traditional Arthur Bryant stop. Uh, we can get into that on the way back. Sure. But it yeah. was it was a lot more expensive. But, well, I don't even know if it was more expensive. It was just barbecue. And then it, the wings were really good. The wings were amazing. They were these big, giant wings. Good Had a flavor. good sauce on them. If anything, if I go back, I'm just going to get some wings. Mm-hmm. Because those were amazing and worth the money. Yeah, I got a burnt end burger. It's supposed to have burnt ends on it. And the burger is supposed to be a mix of hamburger meat with brisket. It just tasted okay. And the burnt ends were nowhere near what I thought they'd be. Yeah, I got the burnt end meal, and it wasn't the burnt ends that I'm used to. Yeah, we're used to like Oklahoma burnt. Joe's or Missouri Joe's <laughs> or whatever. Burnt. Where you, well, it's that, and it's just all covered in sauce and That's good. true. I can't remember. It what just you... tasted like smaller pieces of brisket. What did Jen get? She got a hamburger as well. No, she got the, the triple threat. The she three had a meats. three meat thing. And she said it was pretty good. Yeah. At nothing, first, at least. Nothing there is extremely good that I found. Right. The wings, Besides the wings. The wings, the were, wings were the best. Yeah. Nothing was bad either, though. I no. don't want to say anything was bad. No, definitely not. But um, So we ate there, and that took every bit of an hour, if not more. Interestingly enough, um, Fat Courtney Love and the... Revivified corpse of Amy Winehouse were waitresses there. <laughs> What's funny is, is I seen them and I thought the same thing. And as we're leaving, Steve goes, 
what do you think of fat Courtney Love? And the the one girl who's dead. And I go, Amy Winehouse? And he said, yes. Yeah. So that's like, that's exactly who I thought both those waitresses were, like to a T. Yeah, I mean, it, it was not subtle. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Good times, good times at other people's expense. And we would make fun of men, too, that just didn't see any that we were worthy of making fun of. It's not just the women. Yeah, we make fun of everybody. Sure. A little bit. Then, what do we do? We hit the road. Yeah, we're just back on the road. Um, we traveled up through Iowa. My phone, for some reason, decided to turn itself off. And then when it came back on, I had no internet. Yeah, that was really odd. I was not happy. I thought my phone had completely died. So we've made this trip now four years, or at least I have. Right. I've always thought Des Moines, Iowa was like really south of like near the border okay. of Iowa and not so far into like halfway through the state. Mm -hmm. So that really threw me off. It's like for the first time I noticed it this time. And I don't know why that was, but it like threw me off big time. Okay. It just felt like we were going forever in Iowa. And I was like, we should be to Des Moines by now, if not yeah. further. And we weren't. Hmm. Um, so that was odd. And it makes me mad that I've done this trip four times now. And it took the fourth time for me to realize this. Well, now you can pay attention to more stuff. Normally, if you go, you're paying attention to the road or the directions. But when you get used to that, it's just, oh, let's look at everything else. Yeah, maybe so. Um, then then we, we al almost died. Then we almost died. It was like... For whatever reason, there's a, a tractor trailer that's carrying cars pulled off to the side of the road. And everybody's slowing down. I was like, okay, that's cool. And then he immediately veered into the traffic, into the R lane. Scott was able to slow down in enough time. He came onto the R side and then immediately went off again as he passed some other truck. Right. It was, it was very scary, actually. Not sure exactly what happened. It caused us to get detoured by about six miles, but we didn't die. Yeah, that's because we missed the exit. But it was weird, and like that's twice I've been with Steve where we've like almost died from a truck that could have hit us, mm -hmm. and we've we've been saved every yeah. time. It's because my great driving. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, my buddy Vin and I were coming back from the comic book store when we were eighteen or so. And it was really snowy out. Like, we probably shouldn't have gone to the comic book store, but we were young and it was a Wednesday. Yeah, you had to get your new comics. Sure. So we're driving back, uh, and it's kind of a rural road, you know, sunny lane. It's not totally rural, but it's not great. And as we're driving, we just see these headlights in the snow flurries coming towards us. It veers towards us in our lane. And then veers the other way and disappears. <laughs> and we're like, the hell just happened? So we pulled over and went to check on the guy. He'd gone off the road into a ditch and hit a tree or something. Or well, he was just sitting there. I'm not sure what. And we went up and like, hey, are you okay? And in retrospect, the guy was drunk off his ass probably. But we thought he just had problems. Right. Because he was kind of out of it. Like, hey, do you want us to call someone? We can take you to somewhere. No, nah, no, nah, man. It's cool. It's cool. Look, we can take you somewhere. We'd rather you not die of frostbite. No, nah, just, just call this number. And this is back before cell phones and everything. So he gave us a number. We went home, called the number. It's like, hey, do you know so-and-so? Yeah. Uh, he's in a ditch. <laughs> so he might want to go get him. Uh, good times. Yeah. Dumb people. Um, so we ended up making it to Drew's house about 630. And yeah. this is in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where we were going to stay uh, for the weekend. And um, we were a little off course, but overall, we, we still did pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's normally a 10-hour drive. It became 12 because of the rain wet. and traffic. And right. there was a lot of construction. Yeah. Um, overall, not too terribly bad. Then we got to Drew's. Um, what did we do? We go eat? Yeah, we went to the Red Ginger. Oh, that's right. We went to a pretty good sushi place called Red Ginger. And Drew goes there enough that the waiter came out and was like, Oh, you're welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, hold on. And he goes back and gets us free wontons. Dude. 
for your friends because he's like I brought my friends from out of town here. It's like oh yes. you have friends. Cool. That made me feel so good that Drew eats at a sushi place so much that the guy knows him and shakes his hand. Just like the guy over I, here just at Volcano say. Sushi. I love it. Yep. He's like the redheaded guy who eats sushi all the time. Mm-hmm. And then Drew told us about how often he eats sushi all the time. <laughs> he gets a lot of sake there from what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy keeps bringing him sake. Um, so he gets drunk. Yeah, we had um, some good sushi. And then we went back to his place. I had to go buy a charger. Um, Steve played. What did you play with Drew? You played Kingsburg? Kingsburg, yes, that's the name and of it. And then Thomas Edison versus Sherlock Holmes? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> Tesla versus Edison. Okay, that's that's a Although, lot better than. <laughs> I like Edison versus Holmes. That's an interesting one. <laughs> the boxing match of the century. <laughs> Kermit Holmes. No, Kermit Holmes was a what? basketball player for OU. Never mind. What? Serious? <laughs> yeah, there was a guy named Kermit Holmes. It's a great name. That's a different name. I remember at the time hearing that thinking, that's so weird. But back on the subject. So what did you think of Kingsburg? I liked it. Okay. It's real simple. And we played it the next night with more people. So I was able to see the two-player versus the four-player. Yep. Well, I guess five-player right. version. And I liked it. it. It compensates for two people very well. And what'd you think of the Edison versus Tesla? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. No, it's overly complicated and not that interesting. Well, those guys, it was okay. Those guys hated each other. Did, did you yeah. feel that in the game? No. Did you find radio waves like out of the air? No. No. No, it was just kind of like getting con- getting stock in companies and trying to take over control of the yeah. areas. And it wasn't horrible. It just wasn't anything that I really cared about. So then we all went to sleep and we slept in a little bit. The next day we did breakfast, I believe, at the probably one of the most redneck <laughs> country breakfast mom and pop places I've been to in a long time. And I'm from Choctaw. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Everybody in there was white. Yeah. And they had a lot of like NRA hats on. And yeah. I mean, legitimately NRA. It was camouflage hat with NRA and like neon green. And some guy was talking about how we just need to produce more oil because we have the biggest supplier, blah, blah, blah. Just total It was like stuff. listening to your really conservative grandpa and his friends talk about how we're the best at everything. And they had American fries instead of French fries. Yeah. Now, all that said. The and food- then I got French toast just to <laughs> piss them off. And it was good, right? It was actually really good. Everything was really tasty there. Except Except for the hash browns. browns. Yeah. Next time I'll get American fries. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Breakfast wasn't bad. Service wasn't bad. It was just very rednecky. Everybody who came in was. Sure was. There's people writing checks for their food. Mm -hmm. Writing a check. And if you're young enough, you probably don't even know what that is. But it's not a check (laughs) card. It's writing a check. You mean those things that you send to the bills? (laughs) That my grandma gives me for my birthday? Yes. They were paying for their $4 breakfast with that. Uh, we went back to the house with plans of cleaning up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I asked Drew just to take us around town because we've been there now for years and we've never just said, take us. And by by Ooh. me saying take us around town, I don't really want to see who like discovered Cedar Rapids. All I want right. to see like the comic and game shops. Yeah. And we haven't really had time before because we kind of just got in the day before. That's had true. Dinner. We had a whole day, a Friday now. Yeah. Uh, me and Jen went walking and stuff on <laughs> Drew's mountainous hill, which was really funny because we walked up this steep hill. And then when we were about halfway through, she's like, well, at least it's all going to be downhill. And I was like, I hate to tell you this. We've been going downhill this whole time once we were on top of the hill. And she didn't really believe me until we started walking back. And she was <laughs> she was cursing the hills of Cedar Rapids. Uh, we came back, showered. We went first to a store called Tempest Games, where I guess is... What? Not even two miles from Drew? Mile? It's right down the road. Um, I guess that's his home store, kind yeah. of, when he's at home. Mm-hmm. I mean, because and you might think Chance and Drew play games together all the time at Critical Hit Games, but truth be told, that's down in Iowa City, and that's at least 30 minutes it's away. It's like 30 or 40 minutes away. So, so in Cedar Rapids, his home away from home is Tempest Games, which is right down the street. Nice little shop. Yeah. Um, it's weird seeing, to me, a game shop thrive and make it without a ton of like magic cards yeah it's very odd had no singles 
It was mainly a game board store. And you could tell that they were not putting on any tournaments for Magic nope, during the week or all. anything? It, uh, supposedly they run a lot of Warhammer stuff, and that was obvious because there was tons of miniatures and stuff like that. They there. also had a lot of terrain stuff, like not, yeah. but the actual like basing material. Yeah. Instead of it being in small round containers <laughs> no, or in big, like big leader jugs right. or whatever, it's kind of cool. They had a really cool game selection. Um, I thought they had a cool little clearance table. They had, I mean, there's a lot of neat little stuff. It was awesome to go there. I found something I wanted, but I was like, I'm going to the other shops before I go back. So yeah. uh, we left there. I you, picked up some extra Blood Bowl uh, sleeves because those are hard to oh, find. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you bought those. And then uh, we went to a little bookstore, and that was just right over there because Jen loves books. And Drew ended up getting some new books, some new used books. Mm-hmm. Then we went to, what do you think, 10 miles away maybe? About, something like that. little drive up north to this place called First Turn? Yeah. First Turn Games? And we actually went through downtown Cedar Rapids. Oh, that's that right. Was we neat. did. We got to see the old buildings. Yeah, and I, I had no like, idea that much was there. And it was the whole, oh, that's as cool. What river is this? The Cedar River. Oh, Cedar <laughs> Rapids. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was that. Oh, I moment. didn't get that before. Um, first Turn Games was a very big shop. Very, very big. It had two levels. Yeah. Not like two, not like stairs, stairs levels, but like you stepped up different though. elevations. Yeah, it was very neat. A lot of people in there playing. They had pinball machines. They had pinball machines. They had board games. They had tons of magic singles. You know what bugged me about that place? What? Its mascot and a lot of the stuff that it had around was a moose. Was a moose. You don't think that's moose worthy? Why? I mean, it's not moose games or moose knuckle games or. Um, I think it's fine. I just didn't see a reason to incorporate it so much because they had stuffed animal mooses and a big giant moose. It's just weird. Maybe the guys from Canada or something. I don't know. Could be. Maybe there's moose, meese, moose, mooses in Iowa. I hate those meeses to pieces. (laughs) Not that I know of. And it might be, but, <laughs> but it was just very it odd. Was, it was different. But um, really enjoyed that shop. Uh, they even had some Star Wars Destiny singles, which was kind of cool. And you ended up buying some? I did, despite my girlfriend probably being really pissed at me for doing so. Because she hates that game so much. It's, it's, it's a boring game. It's not a boring game. Yeah. It's a good game. It's too slow. It's too slow. Okay. Well, if it feels slower than what it should be. Okay, that's fine. That's my only real complaint. Sure. Um, and it takes a crap ton of, to buy to get a decent deck. That's true. I'll, I'll give you that. So we left there, and Drew took us to one more shop in an old school, like, 1980s, early 1990s mall. I didn't even know this thing. Most malls are dead. It wasn't too bad, really. It didn't seem that dead. I think in my brain, malls are dead. Right. For sure. Since I never want to go to a mall anymore because mm-hmm. the two I grew up around, I just they're dead. <laughs> I mean, we still have like two open. Yeah. Around here. Well, we have three. Three? Sooner, Pen, and Quail. Oh, that's true. See, I even forget about that. But So we went to the mall because there was another game shop in there. And they had a... It was different. It was like ho- hobbies stuff. Like if you wanted to build a boat or a plane to fly, like a remote control plane. Yeah, they had RC cars. They had puzzles. They had educational toys, and they cap didn't, guns. They didn't have a bad selection of board games. No, they had a decent selection. They had a little area to play, probably about five or six tables. And they even had some... Did I tell you that they had a army for a game called Stratego Legendary or something like that? No. I don't know if it was called Legendary Stratego or Stratego Legendary, but it was it was like an undead army for Stratego, a version of Stratego that was marked down to like five bucks. And I was like, do you have the main set for this? And he's like, no, that's a, that game's been out you know years ago and it's already come and gone. Huh. So I guess at some point Hasbro or whoever had it, Milton Bradley, or if that's all owned by the same people, made yeah. a different Stratego game. With like, in some ways, like Blood Bowl, we had different races that you could play Stratego, which were, I mean, I'm sure there was like alternate rules a little bit, you yeah. know, like, but I thought, dude, I, if I he would have had like a starter the, set. 
I would have picked up that army in the starter set in a second. Yeah, I was so. going to say, I remember liking that game a lot. I do, too. And I kind of want to get it for my kids just so they can experience it. It's probably boring now. But. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So uh, we went to that game shop, and nobody bought anything except for Jennifer, who bought a tardigranite. Am I saying that right? Tardigrade? Tardigrade. Tardigrade. <laughs> Did I say tardigranite? Yeah. It's a stone version of the tardigrade. Gotcha. If you don't know what a tardigrade is... Look it up. It's like a microscopic bug thing that supposedly is going to survive space. and Yeah. You know, nobody's even heard of them. They're cool. For the most part, until like five years ago, and now everybody's heard of them. I'm but, sure they've been around forever, but yeah. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm, I'm saying like the common man didn't know sure. a whole lot about them. But. The indestructible microscopic being. Yeah. So um, she bought a little stuffed animal with that, which was really cool. Yeah, those were deep. They had all sorts of diseases. Mm-hmm. And, um, Scott gave me herpes. Yeah, I gave him herpes, and I was trying to give him the AIDS, but he never touched it. No, they had all these diseases in a format where it was a stuffed animal with like eyes. Mm-hmm. So you really could give a stuffed animal AIDS to somebody. Yeah, or a sperm, or they chlamydia. Had, they had the egg to go with the sperm. Did they have the egg? Yeah, I didn't see that. No, Jen found it at the very end. Oh, okay. The sperm had a blue bow, and the egg had a purple bow, a uh, pink bow. Oh, that's cute. Um, they had the tardigran, granite. Tardigrade? Tardigrade. I can't, obviously, I've Think I don't even know if I'm saying it right. But. It might be. It's probably not tardigranite. No, it is not that. I know that. <laughs> they had all sorts of cute little diseases. They were just two bucks too much. I wanted yeah. to get my kid the, the tardigrade, but I was like, I'm not spending If they were like five bucks, bucks, sure. Being yeah. ten bucks, meh. Yeah, but... Anyways, we had a good time, left the mall, went back to Drew's house. I then, like... We were doing the cookout. Doing the cookout. I went back up to Tempest Games and bought a copy of Shadows of Brimstone because it was the one copy I can't find here because there's two different versions. Came back. We got ready for the cookout. Did we do anything else between that and the cookout? No. And then the cookout happened. We had a ton of food. ton of people. ton of people. Um... Trying to remember if I can say everybody's name. We had Mike Muller, Jeff Gallenbeck. We had Dean, Phil. a guy named Dean that we never met before. Right. I don't remember his last name. Phil Bonerak. Yeah. Those are all the Chicago area guys. Mm-hmm. We had uh, Duder, Derek, big listener of the podcast. Um, him and Kramer, Matthew Kramer, only known as Kramer to everybody, was there. And then me, you, Drew, and Jen. Was that it? I want to say there was like one more person, but I don't remember it. Who that could be. Oh, Tim Lyons. That's yeah, who it was. Tim, duh. Tim Lyons showed up a little bit later than everybody else, mm-hmm. but not much. He didn't miss out on anything. Uh, we had Did his hand. friends ever show up? Like work friend or whatever? I don't or think. Was that just it? No, that was it, I believe. I believe okay. that was it, because there was those guys. and the, Yeah, there was like 10 of us or so. I spent most of my time down in the basement. It was, it was cooler nice and there. cool. Yeah, that's the place to be. After I ate up all my sausages. Uh, people were drinking. People were playing games. You guys started playing Kingsburg again. Mm-hmm. With five people that time. Five people. I uh, won both games at Kingsburg, by the way. Oh, you're the Kingsburg master. I'm the Kingsburg king. Um, upstairs, we started finally playing Baron Park after a lot of craziness happened. People, Drunk people are hilarious, dude. Right? No. No, they're annoying to see. They're usually annoying, but... There was nobody annoying. If you're though. drunk, well, uh, some bodily part made its way into a drink. No. Just saying. That was just a rumor. Sure. That didn't happen. Okay. Um, but drunk people are funny. Steve does not think so. But he's a control freak. Oh, absolutely. I'd like to get you drunk. Yeah, it's probably never going to happen. Oh, I didn't tell everybody. Drew said he'd get a tattoo until Friday morning, and then he changed his mind. Yeah. He claims because it would take too long, and he wants to hang out with us. Which is a good call, because Jen and I didn't want to sit around for four hours while you guys got tattoos. So? Exactly. You guys could have went and saw a movie and had a date. Could have. You guys get along fine. Yeah, but she's not going to put out. Well, I hope not. That'd be awful. Like, if I sent you guys to a movie, you come back and go, that was really fun, Scott. Especially if you paid. <laughs> yeah, if I paid. I'd be like, mm. <laughs> Uh 
couple games of Baron Park was played. If you have not, I love that game. I'm not great at it. I'm always the second place, but you're making a bear park. I think it's interesting. Out of these little I tiles. I don't love it. I think I like it because it's just really low key. That it is. So there's like no stress. Yeah. And I don't, but I'm convinced that if you're the first player, you're always going to lose. Because once again, the first player became, was last both games. Hmm. And the games we played here at home, same thing happened. So um, everybody eventually left. And then uh, we finally all went to bed and uh, getting ready to get some rest for the next day, which is what you guys are more excited about is hearing about Blood Bowl. The three die brawl. So let's take a quick break and we'll go to the second segment of the day or the weekend or the trip or whatever you want to say, where we'll talk about the three die brawl. morning of saturday and we get up to go to the three dime brawl i don't think there's anything exciting that happened that morning we went to the worst chick-fil-a in the united states oh of well yes that did happen <laughs> we decided you know we should probably get something fast something good you know what's fast and good by us chick-fil-a and there's one right down the road yeah and it's relatively healthy honestly you know it's yeah, not it's the greatest thing but eating a big breakfast at mcdonald's right so we get there and there's no cars so we're like hey this is going to be pretty fast and we get inside there's nobody waiting like okay cool well, there's one guy but okay he's getting helped so no big deal we order our food and we sit back and we wait and then we wait and then we wait and then we wait some more and it took for freaking ever. and then we wait some more and finally that guy got his food and then we waited even longer and finally got our food. I wanted to get a Chick-fil-A biscuit with the spicy <laughs> filet, but they don't serve the spicy chicken biscuit anymore, so you have to order it special, and it takes five to seven minutes. I didn't want to wait that long. We, we totally waited there longer than that. Oh, for sure. We I could have had my spicy filet. Yeah, we. I mean, whatever they cooked for you, they probably dumped in the fryer right then yeah because it was awful and it was didn't taste all that great either no it really was the worst chick-fil-a i've ever had in my life yeah it was bad uh it really tasted like fast food mm -hmm. like in a terrible way so so then we made our way out we, to iowa city right and like i said it's about 30 to 40 minutes and then with that delay chick-fil-a made us late by about five minutes yeah and it was raining because of course it was <laughs> yeah i mean we went to iowa so it had to rain every freaking it rained a little bit on friday so yeah whatever um we'll get into the shop there's already a lot of people there yeah there really was a lot of people showed up early i think it's funny how people show up so early which is better than them showing up late though it's just yeah odd oh well, nothing else to do might as well show up yeah i guess so just ready to get early. going yeah um so what team it's, did you take it's the first time i've been oh. to chance's shop in two years because i wasn't able to make it last year okay because it was a morocco cup the week before oh that's right and i like the way it's set up a lot better uh he's really because it's the first time i've been to it since he's owned the shop okay well he changed a lot since last year oh really you okay. know how he had the games on the shelf with those like the pegs the pegs sticking yeah. out he changed that. Last year, it was not that way. No, I really liked that. And it was a lot more open, a lot more tables to yeah. play. It looked really nice. Yeah, for the space he has, he did. A, he's done a great job Absolutely. of changing it. And especially since we went there the very first year. Oh, no doubt. With the lady with the fish, fish tank. tank and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so what teams you take? I didn't really know what to take, so I just kind of threw together a Chaos Dwarf team. And you were going for a specific award? No. Okay. Uh, initially, like, I knew that they give away an award for most times getting caught or for throwing the most three-die blocks. So I thought about building a team to do one of those. Then I was like, well, no, I really should just make a team to play and to win. And then if other stuff happens, other stuff happens. Right. So my team, the Howling Wastes Death Rockets, because I found a really cool logo. <laughs> Howling Wastes is in the fluff, okay. and they test death rockets in that area. Is this like Warhammer 40K, or is I, this like in the 
don't know. Sigmar stuff or something. Honestly, I have no clue. There's some gunpowder stuff, in, at least yeah. in the old old world. So I just took that and went with it. Uh, I took a Minotaur with Pro, one Bull Centaur with Russell, one Bull Centaur with Block, three Blockers with Guard, and a Hobgoblin with Sure Hands. Two rerolls and 12 players. Okay. And uh, one Fan Factor, yeah. Fan factor. Did it ever help you? Yes. One time it made us even. Okay. And another time it kept me from getting doubled up. Okay. So yeah, I always I don't mind dumping money into fan factor. You'd always do that over cheerleaders and coaches. One hundred percent. Okay. No question. Because fan factor will always come into play. Depending. That's true. The other ones might not. They yeah. I had plenty of games where I never rolled a coaches or uh cheerleaders okay i'm just just curious yeah um so what'd you end up taking um jen took which is not me right. she took dwarves because uh, she same, loves dwarves and she has a fully painted dwarf team and that's what she knows that's what she knows yeah and if um she didn't play a lot of games going into this so like she was gonna be really rusty and she knew that mm-hmm. um she pretty much went with the same build she had last year, except they changed the skills, so or the skill packages. Yeah. So she had two troll slayers with mighty blow, uh, runner both runners I think with block, and then like three guys with guard. So standard kind of dwarf thing. Sure. Um, I took the um, brimstone, <laughs> brimstone, brim stone. All one word, brimstone, demons. Okay. Um, I kind of struggled with, like, the fluff because for this team. Actually, what I did is I made two teams up. I made a Bretonian team and a corn team up because this was going to be my first opportunity to play either Bretonians or corn where they're legal. Yeah. Since now they're, an, you know, they're going to be a ranked team in the NAF, you know, big picture of everything. So if I play them... I don't hurt anybody's ranking who's there or right. anything like that. So I came up with two teams. I t- turned into rosters, and I told Drew, I said, whatever somebody doesn't play, I'll play. And then he's like, well, they're both getting played already, so just pick. And I was like, okay. Then I thought, corn is going to suck with all that frenzy. So it's only four games. I heard rumblings that maybe Chaos Cup is going to let both these teams in. They should, yeah. So I was like... I probably would rather play Bretonians longer than uh, corn. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. So I said, I'll just do corn then and get them out of the way. Besides, I, I named all the players and you know came up with the, the team and everything. And I put uh, Bator the Blackheart on that team. He's a pit fighter. So like I made the origin <laughs> of the future coach for the Chaos Pack team, Bator's Blackhearts. Nice. So that, that was interesting to me. Fluff inside fluff. Exactly. Um, besides, I also like the little demon logo that I found, and I really wanted to use that no matter what. So <laughs> um, let me get my team out here since I folded it all up. That's really smart. I'm going to be real honest with you. I didn't build my own team. Uh, I think I moved one skill around. Um, I don't own a corn team, and right. I don't own a Bretonian team, and... I just asked Tim Lyons, I said, since you played with both of these at your in your leagues, I said, what would you play? And he's like, well, I know you like to have at least two re-rolls, and I know you like to have a bench player. So here's what I would do if I was forced into that situation. So I went with a Bloodthirster with Mighty Blue. I went with um, three Bloodletters. They're the guys with seven armor, if you don't okay. know, and regeneration. One Sure Hands, two Dodge, uh, Corn Heralds. They're the ones that have Frenzy, Horns, Juggernaut already. And I gave one tackle and one block. And then, of course, Betar the Blackhearted, he had guard. He's the pit fighters. Um, I had two re-rolls, so I had the one bench. I had no fan factor or anything else like that. So Okay. So, here we go. Into <laughs> round one. Okay, well, I will start. I guess, no, we'll save that for the end of this segment. Go ahead. Okay. Round one, I ended up playing Jeffro, uh, his Sitagaza Ballhawks, I think. It's kind of a weird font, hard to I, read. I think it's a playoff, like, 
Chicago Blackhawks. Blackhawks. I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. But but it's Elfie. So yeah, it's very healthy. Around. So that's cool. Uh, he ended up playing... These are High Elves? It's High Elves. Okay. And he's got Soren Hightower and Beau Gallant on there. So yeah. two star players, only 11 players. Interesting. So I guess this is the last year you're able to take star players for 10 and 11. Yeah, Drew said that's unchanged. Because they didn't year. expect that to happen, I guess. <laughs> Um, my problem with this is I didn't read over his list because I'm dumb and he has kick and I set up with only one guy in the backfield because I have my sure hands and he kicks it to the corner and it goes further to the corner. (laughs) So I'm trying to hurt his people and he's just going around me to go pick on my ball carrier. And ends up getting a defensive touchdown on me real fast. That's nice. But so for this tournament, you do have to keep track of three die blocks. And if you get caught fouling, I didn't foul enough to get caught. So that didn't really come into play. Mm -hmm. However, I was keeping track of my three die blocks as I went. Now I have a minotaur who only needs one person to get a three die block if I'm blitzing. And I can get two of them if I frenzy. All right. And then my bull centaurs with the three guard, not too hard to get three die blocks. So started doing that, started kind of focusing on that as I was going through. In game one? Or did you? It was wasn't... kind of, I'm typically going to want to get a three die block if I can anyways, because sure. it's better for you. And then it just ended up being, I was getting a lot of them. And I'm going through and... He scored on me that first half. I kind of almost stopped him, but didn't. So he scores. And then I receive the second half. Uh, I kick to him, and I end up basically tying him one-to-one there at the end. Okay. I was hurting him decently. I think I ended up with five or six casualties against him. And so at the end, he didn't have that many people left, but he's still elves. And he's got Bo Galante. Bo Galante there, mm-hmm. and I forget he has sidestep, so I hit him, and he because j- I'm kind of by the sidelines, and he just squirts around <laughs> the side of me, like damn it. So, I ended up, I was going to score early. He's like, "Do you really want to score? Because you're giving me two turns." I'm like, "No, I should probably wait a turn." So I ended up scoring on turn eight. Oh, that's so nice tied of you. one to one, about. I would say about halfway through the game, I'm looking at my three die blocks, and I think Nick's to the table next to me, and I'm looking at his three die blocks, and we're about even. Okay. I'm like, damn it. You know, I'm trying to outdo him now. In my mind, I'm thinking everybody's doing these. And I think I was at 15, and he was at 16 or 17. Mm-hmm. I was like, damn it, I need to get more. So that's when I started kind of really focusing on it. And then I look over, and they're finishing their game. I was like, oh, wait a minute. (laughs) So he had like maybe 20 for the whole game. I have not even that, probably 16 or so for the the whole game. I ended up finishing game one with 28 three-die blocks. Jesus. So, yeah, got a tie and 28 three-die blocks. Nice. My round one, I played an ogre team. I played Josh Wyatt from Minnesota. Um, I remember Josh because um, he was at the first three die brawl we were at, and he got the most casualties. Okay. Uh, we've been friends on Facebook, and I, truthfully, I thought he kind of like faded out of Blood Bowl. You know, I was like that guy was really cool, and just faded out. Um, but we got to play in round one, so that was really cool. Um, so I thought the Bloodthirster had six strength. Like I when played, you asked me, I was like, "Yeah, he has six strength." Yeah. So I did this thing where I was like, "Okay, I'll do this with the Bloodthirster," and I did this thing thinking I was going to get three dice. No, I think it was. I can't remember. Maybe his ogre had it or something. I think I, I was hitting an ogre, but anyways, so I what, thought what was he? He was ogres. Okay, he was ogres. I was trying to clear out of this ogre. And you know how my team has frenzy everywhere. Yes. Anyways, I made the mistake of 
doing this and he had um his build was interesting he had a bunch of guard on his ogres he just spammed guard everywhere right it probably had two less of snotlings though he had all six ogres and only 11 snotlings mm-hmm. so i was like all i gotta do is kill the snotlings and you know 10 snotlings then no 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 he had 11 total players that's it that's it so he didn't have six ogres and ten snotlings. No, 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 no. He had six ogres and five snotlings? Yeah, I believe so. The hell? He might have had 12, but it wasn't any more than 12. I think it was 11. Did he uh, have a lot of rerolls? He had more than he probably should have for having six ogres. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, um, I was down a man like right off the bat. I think I even texted you saying, here we go. I yep. haven't had a turn yet. I'm down a man. Um, anyways, I, I blitzed with my guy, thinking he naturally had six strength. And with the blitz with horns, I'd get seven strength. This right. is why I thought the guy, stupid guy is 180, you know. Right. Um, I was wrong. Okay. And I didn't realize that. So I, I threw the first dice, and I got two dice. And then the next dice was <laughs> one die. And I was like, what do you mean one die? And I kind of argued a little bit. And then I thought, this guy's acting like he knows more than me. So maybe I should just <laughs> double. So I asked somebody else, and they're like, no, five, six when he's blitzing. I'm like, oh, crap. <sighs> so I threw the one die, and I think we got it both down, which the ball was, like, wide open. Yeah. And I had some other guys. So I should have moved some guys over there before doing what I was doing because I was too tempted to surf an ogre. Mm-hmm. And um, anyways, he picked up the ball and scored. It was one nothing. So that was really frustrating. I came back. Uh, I had enough time to drive for the the score in the first half. So it was 1-1 at halftime. And in the second half, I ended up luckily knocking out a couple ogres. I like, knocked one out, and I casualtied one. And I was like, I'm not even a chance that he can throw or get two plays. I'm going to score on turn eight. Mm-hmm. Um, I had six turns, though. To hurt his last two snotlings. And I blocked them both every time. Never hurt them. Never <laughs> hurt them. Stunned them maybe a few times, but I didn't break armor every time. Yeah. That's for sure. Jeez. It was frustrating. So then I score on turn eight, which means he has one turn eight. I get a great kickoff where it's going to mess him up. Well, the clock sets back. So now oh. we have two plays. So he has an opportunity, but he's out of re-rolls, and he fails to go for it. So, like, thank God. Yeah. Um, really fun game. Um, I'm glad I got my feet. I guess I'm glad I played a stunty team because it helped me. Because l- I'd probably been way more mad if I was playing, like, I don't know, an elf team or a dwarf team and or an orc team going in with. I'm glad I just didn't mess up with that six Somewhere oh, yeah. else. Thank you. Six strength. Yeah, that's why I ran over to you and go, what does the Bloodthirster have? And you go, six? And I was like, wrong. <laughs> so did you win that game? So I did win two to one. Okay. Uh, round two, I'll talk about mine, then we'll talk to yours. Um, I sat across from, I played dwarves. I moved up to like table four, something like that. Uh, sit across from a team of dwarves. And this guy named Jeremy, I believe his name is Jeremy Cobert. That's what his nap handle says. Um, he sits down, and he has the sense of humor where he's joking with me, but I didn't know he was joking with me. He started talking about, like, Drew came by, and he starts talking about, like, oh, you know, that guy with the podcast. He's like, there's actually another podcast I like, not theirs. And he was really going along with this, and I was like, are you being serious? And he's like, yeah, I mean, you might have heard of it. It's called Both Down. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> and, like, he kept a straight face. And it was pissing me off because I couldn't tell if he was joking or not. And then I thought he was, like, being serious. And I was like, well, do you know, like, I'm on that podcast? And he's, <laughs> and he's like, well, of course I do. And I'm like, dang it, you got me. <laughs> Anyways, he was uh, a fan of the podcast. He says he listens all the time. Um, he says he's only played about 30, 25, 30 Blood Bowl games. He had an awesome Painted Dwarf team. He doesn't think it was awesome painted because he Is said... the green one? He had gr- different shades of green yeah, on it and it stuff. it really good. I thought it looked good. He said everybody locally teased him because he uses those like ink dips to put his players in. If it works. To shade them. 
And I was like, dude, I said, I like it enough that I'd pay you to paint my team. He's like, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay. Uh, we had a very tight game. First half ended 0-0. Zero, zero. Second half, uh, he kicked to me. And then I, I managed to pretty much stall. I think I got to – I think I finally scored on turn six. And then we eventually ran out of time. So I won one to nothing. Nice. But it was a, a very tight game. I had to play down again. He hurt some guys. <laughs> um, That's just your automatic thing. Yeah. Uh, he had three re-rolls and no bench. And luckily, I finally broke some armor and knocked some of his guys off the pitch in the second half. I'm trying to think if any of my people got in casually at all this whole tournament. <laughs> That's neat, Steve. I don't think they did. That's neat, Steve. I'm not. I'm. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm like eighty-five percent sure nobody got casualty. That is amazing. No, get, get out of my had, face. Had to be at least one. Who'd oh, you no. play in round two? Round two, I played AJ Murray from Nebraska, the Hurricane online. He had a slon team of the old alien-looking slon. Yeah, he told me where they're from. Impact. Ma- well, another manufacturer made them, and yes. then Impact reproduced them in their in their plastic form or whatever. Yeah. I can't remember that. It's it not like, Roll Jordan. It was like Rose something or Green something? I don't remember. Goblin Guild or something? I don't no, know. No, it, was, it wasn't that. No? Okay. Anyways, uh, it was Lustria 51. Since the, they're aliens. They're more alien looking. Yeah. Like when I sat down across from him, I thought it was those aliens... From Dreadball. I could see that. But they look too big. Mm-hmm. But cool looking models. And his team was four catchers and the rest linemen. And five re rolls. Five freaking re rolls and an apothecary. Two wrestle on linemen, two guard on catchers, and two dodge on catchers. Mm hmm. You think that doesn't sound bad? No. Uh, I think he kicked to me to begin with. And I was lucky enough to get rid of a couple of his catchers pretty fast. Casually to him, didn't have to worry about him. I think it was one dodge and one guard guy. So I thought, okay, cool. This is going pretty good. I end up scoring. I think, I don't remember exactly the play. Anyways, it got to a point where I think I did six casualties against him at the end. In the beginning, every freaking armor roll was a four. Not even like, oh, that's funny. No, seriously. It was a 2-2, two, two, then a 2-2, two, two, then a 2-2, two, two, then a 3-1. <laughs> then I got a five, but then I got a three, so that evens out to two fours. <laughs> it was absolutely insane. He told me about that. And then, like I said, I think he scored the first half, so I think we were tied one-to-one first half. But I'm eventually starting to get rid of some people. Like I said, I got rid of a couple of his catchers. That's the main ones. Then second half comes, kick to him, and he gets the ball, and he he sets up on one side, and he goes along that one side, and I can't stop him. Like, I've got, he's got less people. I've got a ton of people. I do the cloud thing. I've got people on him. He just, he doesn't fail anything. He leaps, he dodges, he makes every roll. I couldn't stop him. I ended up losing three to one. No, excuse me, four to one. I lost four to one. (laughs) At the end, I was not even caring. I was just like, okay, I'm going to hurt you, and I'm going to get three die blocks. I'm at this point now. Gotcha. So that game, lost four to one, had six casualties, I think. So going into... The lunch, I'm at 11 casualties in the lead by two. And I got 32 three-die blocks. So I'm at 60 three-die blocks after two games. Wow, that's pretty good. And so going into lunch, I'm leading at casualties. And I have uh, the lead on three-die blocks by 28, I believe. Wow. So I'm a full game ahead of people. I'm like, I think I can get that one. I should be able to get the casualties. Let's see how things go. Okay. So then we broke for lunch. Went to the Mexican place. We went to whatever it's called, Ponchitos or something. I think it is Ponchitos. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. I guessed it. It's like a build your own burrito 
And the difference is, is they stir it up before they fold it into the burrito. Yeah. I liked it a lot better last year than this year, but it is what it is. I it's a, just slop together burrito. Yeah, I got a bowl, chicken. Yeah, you salsa probably made the, the best choice. It was fine. Yeah. Um, then we came back. We started round three. And round three, we had a both down, three die block showdown. We really did, didn't we? I did not even realize that. You, you were just playing said Drew, that. and I was playing Chance. Uh, I played Drew Bucciconi from Three Die Brock. Brock? Three, Three Die, Die Brock. Brock. I want to say Brawl and Block at the same time. Three right. Die Block podcast. And this this is now a tradition where I play him almost every tournament and get my face pounded in by him. So you lost? Um, we played. He had his Bretonians, and I had the corn team. Nice. Um, he might tell really you. not a good matchup for you because of all the fend. Right. It was a terrible matchup. And even he said that. Like, on paper, yes, you should lose. Uh, I worked my butt off. He hurt me left and right. It, um, I had a chance to score at about turn six in the first half because he was forcing me in a situation where I couldn't stall. It was like, I'm losing too many players. I, if I don't score now, I'm never going to score. Mm -hmm. So I went for it twice. I had a reroll. No big deal, right? Mm-hmm. And I was, I was thinking, like, how many times do you stall too long and it costs you? Just play some defense. You play good defense, it doesn't matter. So went for it, made it. Went for it again, rolled a one. Reroll, tripwire. No, rolled another one. So I think I've decided what I want to do with this in, this, in the future. Uh -huh. If it's the last turn, I've got a reroll, and I'm going in for that last go for it for a touchdown, I just want to roll two dice at one time. I don't want to do this one, use the reroll, get a one. I but just is that the drop. right way to do it? I don't know. I know some people Odds do that. Odds should be fine. <laughs> but I just want to not be... Uh, if it comes up snake eyes, fine. Whatever. <laughs> but I don't like that one... Okay, now just not a... And then it goes into the dice tower, doesn't move at all, and just slides out on that one. You're like, damn it! So here's what I thought. I thought if I score... I maybe can get through the this half, and then maybe he's hurting enough players. Like, if I don't recover these knockouts, then I'm probably going to get beat two to one anyway. Right. But I wanted to score. So I didn't score. Luckily, he didn't score either. You know, he had a guy. I, I kept ma making sure I was hitting the guy that was furthest downfield, so he couldn't get up and throw the ball to him. So we go to halftime, 0-0. Zero, zero. I get a good recovery out of my knockouts. We still hit the pitch i don't i want to say it was 10 on 10 but i think that's wrong but it doesn't matter right um he started kind of beating me up again and it was kind of like our game at chimera cup where i had to do kind of some crazy things to now i wasn't jumping in the cage with um corn but like here's a guy with block and dodge all right well i'll try to hit you and I rolled the pow. Yeah. Or, you know, luckily I get two dice and I still get the pow, which I got the pow way more than I probably should have. Long story short, he was getting frustrated. I think I played good, but like, I never know if I like, was I lucky or did I play good for what I had on the field? Right. Or was it all both? Because that's kind of how Blood Bowl is. It's usually both. Anyways, we tied zero to zero. Um, I had a chance that if I would have picked this ball up and thrown a long pass... And caught it, you know, theory bowl. If yeah. I would have made four, four rolls in, in a row, I could, or better, I probably could have scored, but I missed the pickup. So, anyways, yeah. it was zero, zero. Um, I was still pretty happy since I was down men and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, how did you go in the battle of three die brawl, <laughs> three die block versus both down? Well, uh, I did play Chance, and he was testing out Elf Union. He hadn't played him before this tournament, I guess. Okay. Uh, is Soul River Rays. He had two blitzers, both with dodge. He had three catchers, one with block, two with wrestle, a thrower with sure hands, and a line elf with leader. Two mm. re-rolls, one fact fan mm. factor. Okay. So the main thing about this is he's Elf Union. He's got seven armor all over the place. And this game went exactly how we figured it would go. I didn't get anything I wanted. 
and he didn't get anything he wanted. <laughs> I sat down and I'm like, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to beat your ass and I'm not going to get any casualties. I beat his ass three to one. I got two casualties. Wow. Two casualties. I guarantee by the third turn, I had knocked every single player of his down twice. <laughs> I knocked everybody down every turn, and I only got two casualties out of the damn thing. It's well, insane. Well, you got the win. He, could not, he couldn't succeed at anything. His first five turns, he failed out, just going for it, picking up a ball, whatever. One re-roll one, one re-roll one, one re-roll one, everywhere. I was knocking him down, not getting anything. I did end up with 31 three-die blocks, so I at least had that. But by half, it was 10. I ended up getting 21 in the second half. Jeez. Well, luckily by the end, I was able to remove some people, knockouts, but at least got rid of them. So you could gang up on them. So my Minotaur... First game, my Minotaur was the star. He was causing casually after casually against Jeff Rowe. He was amazing. This game, he decided not to come back from lunch. And <laughs> I got the three die I got the three die block. I got two both downs and a skull. Was able to pro it and get two skulls and a both down. Nice. The next turn I go to use him, blitz again, and got two both downs and a skull. Was not able to re-roll it. Then later on in the game, I got another one of two skulls and a both down. Was able to pro out of it this time. So by the time I was up two to one, he scored to make it two to one. So he's kicking the ball off. No, actually it's halftime. So he kicks the ball off to me. The ball goes on his side of the pitch. I've already got a lead. I just give it to the Minotaur. <laughs> I'm like, screw it. Come get it. Five strength Minotaur went all the way down the field. And with pro, when I tried to move him, if I fail, use pro. Get it. Move him. Walk down the field. So my third touchdown was with the Minotaur. That's pretty nice. You can, you can say you did that on the... Um want list for uh, yeah. bowl tournaments. It's cool and all, but man, I sure would have liked freaking casualties. Right. So going into the final So round, what I'm hearing is both down was better than three die block. At least I was, yes. <laughs> I mean, we already said on paper <laughs> that Drew should beat me. With That's true. versus, you know, corn. Absolutely. All right, round four. So yeah, going into round four, I'm one behind... I'm either tied or one behind on casualties. I forget which. Okay. And I'm at 91 for the three die blocks. For the three die blocks. And the record is 115. Okay. I only need 24 more to go. Okay. Which shouldn't be an issue based on. As long on as you don't get like, you know, matched up to like Kimry or, or orcs. orcs. Yeah. So obviously, round four, I get freaking orcs. It was Terry Harms, his orc team, which has no name. That I can see. Yeah, the stupid, whatever, it's a Zen 7 sheet. I don't know what it is. Whatever like, his sheet is, I hate it. So like a different army builder thing? Yeah, it's so hard to read for me. Okay. Not a big deal. but So his, his team basically consists of black orcs with block. And you got the chukka with leader. And put a block on his troll. Okay. And then I guess diving catch on the goblin. That's odd. That's different. And then, Did he try to throw it a lot? Yeah. I mean, see, look at that sheet. It's just hard to read. Yeah. And that's what happened. Ended up winning, uh, ended up tying, excuse me, two to two. And he got two one turn touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I. Threw a long bomb, 10 squares by eight, to get, to clear the ball and to get down the field for one of my touchdowns. So he got two one turn touchdowns and I lucked into a long pass. But I only ended up getting 12 three die blocks. Oh, that's And I 
think one casualty, maybe two. Oh, so, so you didn't get the legacy thing. I didn't break the record, nor did I win most casualties. So you crapped the bed. I did end up winning with most three die blocks, though, by a lot. All right, well, see, you're you're getting ahead of yourself here. Well, that's so people know. Um, I was on table two for round four, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Now, throughout the day, since at this point I'm two wins in the tie, I, every time I win or tie, I've been telling Jennifer, "Remind me later that I've been happy with this." <laughs> right. Because I I say going in like if I could just get go fifty fifty, I'd be thrilled to death. Mm-hmm. Um, so there I am versus AJ Murray's slam team. And I'm thinking, okay. And I look at it and on paper they're I know that's a decent build for them. Right. But it seems like you should be able to hurt them, but and I'm like, can contain them. But I, I know if I don't hurt him, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Um, dude, it was like you told me you have to carry a gallon of water. And only using four of your fingers as the bowl to carry it. Right. It was just like trying to just control water or something. Um, Kicks off to me. And just out of nowhere with those guards and leaping around. I mean, and he didn't. Second half, he used all his rerolls. First half, he did not use all his rerolls. Right. And I mean, he'd make ten rolls in a row. And just boom, 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 and just swarming you. Mm-hmm. Knock the ball. I mean, and to be fair, a lot of times he hit me with one dice. That's all he needed yeah. a lot of times. And it was pals. And this, and I was like, I got plenty of blocks. I cannot complain about block dice whatsoever. We shared dice. Um, no complaints about that. I couldn't break armor to save my life. Yep. I couldn't break armor. I knocked out of a few of his guys, but he casualtied my tackle guy, the one guy I needed. Oh, wow. At one point, I was down men against him. Yeah. And I was like, this ain't good. Well, he scores like in three plays. And then we um, go into the second half. I hold him off or whatever. Anyways, second half, he scores. I make a joke because I'm thinking like, I could still squeeze best defense if he doesn't score any more points Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i was getting frustrated and i was said something about calling it and he's like well you want to call it and i'm like no because it's not even if i lucked into an award that's not how i want to win an award right yeah and i said besides you're on second table i said you might need as many tiebreakers to get third true as possible you know i said if you beat me you beat me type deal um well, he scored instantly. He did the same thing he probably did to you, where he lined up so way the, overpowered on one side. Mm-hmm. You're thinking, I haven't got the kick to go where I wanted it to go. He went over there, picked it up. I had that. Threw a long pass to the other side, made all those rolls. I had that. He got high kick, put his guy underneath, goes to throw the ball, failed. It had to scatter. Went next to his guy with diving catch, grabs it, and goes. <laughs> it's like, uh, even when he fails, he can't fail. I did screen him as much as I could, and I put people all over I could, had this cloud thing going, so yeah. like wherever he dodges and he has to do this, well, he was at a point where he's like, okay, I'll just do, I'm going to just make the rolls, and he made every freaking roll. It mm-hmm. was so freaking frustrating. So it was 2 nothing, like early into the second half. I get the ball back. I wouldn't say early. Maybe play four. And at this point, I know the game's over. Yeah. It's just a matter of if he's going to win three or four, nothing, or two to one. Um, I get the ball, and I manage to knock out the first three guys on the line. So, like, I had them down men, and then I just waited till turn seven to score. That way, in case I got the blitz and just luck happened. Yeah. He recovered all his guys from knockout, though. So, I mean, it's still a full team. Jeez. Um, anyways, he, he plays Slon really good. Yes. And at one point, he rolled... I think 14 rolls without any problems. I think he rolled one. He used a built-in re-roll for like a dodge or Mm -hmm. something. It was so frustrating. But he's playing him well. I think he's taking him. I think he's planning on going to World Cup. And so he was talking about theorizing different builds and stuff. But um, I know he was playing them to get back his U.S. ranking. I think he was number one with them. He used to be, yeah. Anyways, when you can't hurt him. It's. And I told him. I said, Even I know what you you're going to do. I said, I know what you're going to do. I just got to try to play my game. And hopefully, you know, yeah. five re-rolls, though. Oh, I pushed you? I'll re-roll it. Pow. Boom. 
Yeah, oh, it finally fell. I'll just re-roll it. Five re-rolls seems like too much, but he just makes such a streamlined team. The four catchers and the linemen. Mm -hmm. What else do you need? And if you can't hurt them. No. I mean, it's just like a Skaven team. If you can't like I said, beat I got up the rid guys, of, the gutter runners are going to eat your butt. I got rid of two of the catchers, and he was still able to pull all that crap on me. That's crazy. Um, so I ended the day, uh, two wins, uh, a loss, and a tie. I had one win, two ties, and a loss. Right. So uh, Jennifer, I think, went zero wins, three losses, one tie. I think so. Um, she had a very awful day, I guess mm -hmm. you'd even say. Um, but at the end of it all, you won an award. You got the most three die blocks. Yeah. Um, well, not really an award. I got, I guess it is. It's an There's award, no but it's not a trophy. Yeah, I got Max and um, Carol. The where the wild things are it's, it's figures. A, it's a painted big guy figure with the little goblin guy from the where the wild things are. Yeah, it's really cool. I just don't yeah. know where I would put them if I want it. I mean, they're, yeah, they but are cool though. They're very neat. Yes, you should go back and buy all the other where the wild things are no. and have whoever painted that paint those, and then you have a cool team. I think it was Tim's wife. Yeah, she's a good painter, but mm -hmm. she won't pay. She won't get me give her money to paint my teams. Right, Tim, your wife should let me. Paint one of my teams for money. Think of all the baby stuff you could buy. It's true. Diapers. <laughs> Real exciting. Uh, so the tournament was won by TJ O'Shea. He got first place. He with faced Camry? off with Kimry. He faced off against the Apes team ran by Nate Beam. And a Math, president. Nate Beam, who got second place. Again. Because they do top table where it's first and second no matter what. Right. Uh, A.J. Murray got third. I know that for sure. Um, I can see the guys. For more awards, check out <sighs> Three Die Block. Yeah, I can't remember who got most casualties and best defense. And Jeff Rowe got most best offense. Yeah. And I can see the guy in my head, but I can't remember his name at the time being who got best defense. And I think I missed the casualty award totally. But was it Jason Acevedo got most casualties? Yes. That okay. is that's right. And Andrew Miller, I think, is the guy who got best defense. Okay. Anyways. Again, we could be wrong, so check out three dot yeah, block. Go to the three dot Three dot block and listen to their version, even though this is the best version. Well, of course. Uh, we had a great time, though. It was a record breaking day. There was 29 people that played. You probably think, how'd you get 29? Well, one guy came in from somewhere else in came Iowa. Came in from Ames. Like Ames, couple, Iowa. A couple hours away. His very first tournament. Uh, he got awful sick, so he had to leave after round one, which I'm glad he left instead of getting us all sick. Yes. Uh, unlike Phil Bonarak, who was sick and got everybody sick. Of course. <laughs> uh, so Chance filled in for him. So they got 29 people, which is a record for those guys. And we're hoping this is the last time we'll be at that venue. Yeah, Chance is looking at getting a new store. And I think it's going to happen no matter what. Right. Sounds like he might be getting a store that's like three times the size for half the rent or something. Yes. Yeah, bigger and better. Yeah. So that would be really awesome because I'd like to what see what said. Chance would do with the store. But yeah. With a bigger space. It'd be really nice. Um, so what we're saying here is basically if you uh, tempt both down to come to your tournaments, more people will come because of us. I mean, that's the only reason Jeffro and Mike Muller and all those guys came. Yeah. They're like, I want to touch the both down guys. Mm -hmm. And they did. And they did. They touched and, us a lot. Right. In our hearts. Right. And our bonus. Maybe. And... Um, Set a record. Then where was the place we went at that night? I don't know. I can't remember. Hipster what it was Central. Called. Who? Hipster Central. Hipster Central. It was some brewery slash beer garden slash sort of has food. It was uh, giant. It was giant. It had shuffleboard bars and a food place. It was fine. I actually ended up liking it. It was way better than I thought. Well, you also ordered everything on the menu. I ordered at least five items from the menu because all of it looked good, and you guys kept ordering stuff, and I was like, <laughs> screw it. I didn't. There was like five of you guys who ordered, and I looked at all five of y'all's plates. Okay, fair enough. And I was like, screw it. I'm here. We're going to drive back, you know. And mm -hmm. So I'm not going to regret it. So 
I'm gonna get me some food. I shared. Yeah. I bought the macaroni and cheese to share with everybody. Okay. I bought the cookies to share with everybody. I can't help it. You didn't get any cookie. You How did never, you not? You never offered. I said it was for everybody when I set it down. Do you, okay, because you're at the other end of the table, and I can hear that. Well, there was like 12 of us there. Yeah. And we were on the end with Chance's girlfriend. We finally got to meet mm -hmm. Aaron. So she does exist, folks. Yeah. And anyways, yeah, I tried a lot of the foods. Mm -hmm. Now I know if we ever go back, like the two things I'd get. The chocolate chip cookie was pretty dang amazing. Okay. I don't even want to admit how good that was, but it was way better than it should have been. Well, since we stopped talking about our, you know, fit for the 24. Um, <laughs> yeah, we ate awful this trip. Steve ate actually fairly good. Steve's Me and Jennifer been, did not. Steve's been keeping track of his calories a lot and doing very well on that. Scott's it, been hitting the, the track a lot. Oh, today was awful. It felt like I had bricks in my lungs, mm -hmm. and it felt like I ate like crap for like three days. Oh, but I think you did. <laughs> I think you really did. <laughs> oh, it was awful today at the at the park. Um, but I think that wrapped it up. We went back. We went through another big, giant thunderstorm. Yep. Went back to Drew's place, and I slept really good because it rained all night. I slept horribly. No idea why. I think I was just exhausted. I didn't get good sleep. Today. I think I was so exhausted I couldn't sleep well. I understand. All right. That wraps up Saturday? Yep. All right. So we are going to pause for a second, and then we will come back with the three-die braft. Is that the right way to say it? The yep. braft? Yeah. The braft. Three-die braft. On yep. All right. We'll be right back. All right. So here we are Sunday, and uh, the day of the three-die braft, and what did we do, Steve? We left. Yeah, we didn't play. Yeah, we didn't play. So we will be back with some shout outs and wrap well, up the episode. We could. <laughs> we did make our way home and it was pretty uneventful. Had some more rain, which was annoying. Yeah, we actually got up the next morning. Did we have breakfast with Drew? No. No, we went we to Dunkin' Donuts. Have, we ended up going to Dunkin' Donuts. And then we drove back. We hit a casino. Steve we won went, money. We went, uh, Steve was seven dollars ahead. Oh, okay. Well, that's more real money. exciting. Well, after fees and everything, <clears throat> probably two dollars ahead. <laughs> and then uh, we also went to Arthur Bryant's in Kansas City for barbecue again. Right, and you and Jennifer weren't impressed. No, I liked it a lot. I that got, made me happy. I remember going there two years ago with Michael Lewis, and we had really good barbecue. And then he went to go get ribs, came back with the ribs, and we all tried it, and they were amazing. So this time through, I just got ribs, and they were decent. And then I tried some of your burnt ends, which were okay, mm, and tried some of the good. brisket, which was <clears throat> eh. And then you went back through and got a ham sandwich, which was okay. There was uh, nothing special about I'm that I'm sorry, place. your palate, your food palate is just dead now. No, there was just nothing special about it this time. Mm, I love the burnt ends. I thought that was good. I'm not a big fan of the sauce they use there. That could be why you wouldn't like the burnt ends. Yeah. It was very satisfying to If me. it was in the sweet and spicy sauce or whatever, I'd probably like it a that's lot That's why more. you put that on top. Yeah, but that's yeah. just sauce on sauce. What What is wrong with that? There's nothing really wrong with that. But You're not a true fat guy. I'm trying not to be. <laughs> so that really wrapped up our Sunday. We did not plan the draft. It was won by... Drew. Oh, Drew ended up winning? Mm -hmm. Did Nate Beam finish second in I that I think too? he tied. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was like six people for that. So, so. Nate Beam is now the end boss. <laughs> He's the for new. Three, for uh, Iowa, at least. President end boss. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, then, that yeah, was it. We were just completely wiped. Dude, I was so tired once we got home. We slept in super late. Mm -hmm. We didn't set our alarms. And I woke up. And I just, it was like going downhill of being super tired for the rest of the day. Yeah. I was going to go into work, and then I was like, no, I'm not going into work. And then today I felt super tired. We went to bed early last night. I wasn't too bad today. <sighs> Tomorrow is going to be interesting. Well, Jen's like, we only got maybe five hours of sleep for like three or four nights. And that, yeah. the night before we left, I worked till midnight, went to bed at like one, and got up at like 5.30. So she's yeah, probably got, right. I've got... 
like I should be the the whole thing like I should be on Zoloft to control the anxiety and all that isn't normally an issue because I don't have a whole lot of stress in my life. So when there's not a whole lot of stress, I don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. I think the trip plus trying to sell stuff plus trying to get stuff ready for the house plus everything else going on, just working too much and all this has got my body going, okay, time to freak out. Let's freak out, everybody. Nah, don't do that. So Buying a house is stressful. Yeah. I mean, it's a big commitment and so many little things. So Yeah, so like we had the trip last weekend, then I got to go down to Arlington, Texas this weekend to sell some stuff, which is good, but that means a big cargo van and blah, 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 blah. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed our three-die block trip. And um, as I said, we'll get back to normal normal seat next month hopefully yeah actually if New somebody location. is like wants us like if you want to suggest a segment sure i'll listen yeah before deciding what we do um overall playing corn since this is the first time even aj murray goes so uh i thought this was funny he's like so how long have you played them and i said this is game four <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like so what do you normally play and i said um Everything, I guess. Yeah. And then he's like, everything. And I was like, yeah, I'm trying to go through playing every team twice at a tournament. Oh, what is that just never been done? Is that why you're doing it? And I was like, no, I just figured if I played tournament, you know, every race at a tournament twice, I'd really kind of know, oh, I really like this team or I really hate this team. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think so either. I, um, I just... Like, I was looking at my stats today. I my did. most played race is Chaos Dwarves. And then I think it's, like, Vampires is up there. Elves is up there. I think there's teams I will maybe never, hardly ever play. Goblins for you? For sure. Yeah. I want to play Goblins. Those are um, fun. But playing corn was interesting because you have to think, and I know everybody already knows this if you play on the PC or you played in leagues that allow it, but right. some people might not have. You have to think of every freaking block because if you push, are you pushing yourself into a one die block mm -hmm. or two dice their favor? It is really rather difficult. In, in hindsight, I might have changed my roster just a little, like maybe an extra guard somewhere. Yeah. I definitely would have took Mighty Blow off the Bloodthirster. Yeah, I don't know why you'd put that there. Well, in theory, it's supposed to break more armor because you play seven or eight armor teams. You have Claw, oh. so you do that combo. Oh. It helped a few times for the Dwarves, but never like... I never rolled casualties because of it. Right. I, I never... It wasn't dominating enough anywhere where I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Um, so I might have taken Mighty Blow off if, if it was me. And I know a lot of people wouldn't do that, but me probably would maybe even give him the guard i don't know um but it was interesting i did not hate them okay the caveat to that is i did well this yep. weekend that helps if i would have went oh and four i might have hated the guts yep um but i learned to kind of play around frenzy as much as i could i learned to like oh i want to definitely blitz with one of these juggernaut guys if if I can't do it with the block guy or the tackle guy, I'll do it with one of these uh, blood letters because at least they have juggernaut and mm -hmm. that will keep them on their feet. But there was times where I was mad that the um, the blood letters did have frenzy. You know, I got confused a little bit like, oh, I could hit this guy twice. Right. So I have two chances. And then I'm like, oh, that guy doesn't have frenzy. So I think I'm going to play them at Chaos Cup. <sighs> Ooh. I would probably recommend two guard, but I don't know what to take away besides telling you mighty blow. But I don't even know if you can take a bloodthirster at Chaos Cup because the build's different. Right. Uh, so I might not if I can't, because if I'm going to play him, I might as well. You're not scared to play with eleven guys. No, like I'm not at all. So there might be your difference. That's true. Eleven guys and one reroll. Um, it was interesting. Like I said, I I did not hate them. Okay. This is not near the bottom at all. I think even if I would have went 0-4, it's not near the bottom. Now you, you qualify for the 24 plus 1. Uh, you mean the 32? Because I've already played 31 unique teams from the game and then the fluff. This That's is, true. Matter of fact, 
to be fair, I've already played Corn because I played them at Buccaneer Bowl years ago when I spammed Frenzy on all my Norris guys. That's true. And I played them there, and I think I had the same result, 2-1-1. One one. So what I'm hearing is we need to make a 33 patch? <laughs> yeah, for me. Okay. Uh, 31, really. I mean, I haven't played Bretonians, but they're just stupid humans. Well, that... there's Bretonians, and then you got to play Simeon. I'm not playing Simeon until they're an athlete. <laughs> so, boom. What if you go to a non-NAF event? I probably won't go. But what I if mean, you did? If I did, I don't have any interest. If somebody had a team to borrow, I might try them. Okay. It was so nice going to the tournament, though. Big thanks to Tim Lyons for letting me borrow his teams because he just had them ready to go. That is really nice. Yeah, so I didn't have to travel with a team. It's so awesome. Just bring, bring your dice. Bring your dice tower. Boom. Mm-hmm. All right. I think that wraps up the whole weekend. Let's... Take a break. Let's come back with some shout outs. Straight from the hills of Iowa comes the new segment that's taking the world by storm. Shout outs! Nice. Cheering shout outs. Kept it nice and long. <laughs> <laughs> at the store. Um, I think it was at the store, yeah. Chance brought out a fan uh-huh. and turned it on or something, and I go cheering fans. <laughs> Did he like that? I don't think he heard me. Oh, so that, that was a wasted pun. Yeah, it's funny though to me. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of fun. Um, so first oh. up for me, mm-hmm. uh, we got a request to put a shout out for the summer jubilee, which is being played at Games Plus in Mount. Prospect, Illinois. Yeah, that, I'm not really sure when because it just says August 2018. And so it sounds like you need to like look them up on Facebook or the Google. <laughs> or, probably look look at the go to the NAF and go look to at the NAF events. site and look up. But go play. Who's run? Do we know who's running it? He sent me an email and a Twitter message. And no, I don't. <laughs> okay, hold on. I will look. Chris or Roz? Okay. I think. Oh, August 18th. That's my bad. August 18th. Yeah. He wanted us to come. And he's like, I know you guys probably wouldn't be able to make it. It's like right before Chaos Cup. Yeah, probably won't. As much as I'd like to, uh, no. I'd like to go to a lot of tournaments. If I was like really rich, that's what I would do. Oh, absolutely. You know that thing Paul Wright said he would do when he retires and he didn't? Exactly. So interesting about this. Well, there's a couple... He's got a lot of interesting rules, which I kind of like, because you can buy special inducements, I guess. You can buy a sparkler or grill gloves, a bottle rocket, or a mystery box. And then you can also buy a commissioner. So commissioners, zero, one to one. In honor of the glorious sport of Blood Bowl, the tournament organizers were able to go out and shock upon shock enroll the past commissioners of the old Nuffle and Oracle League. Any team can hire one of them. They don't have they don't like to work together. And in the cases where two teams hire the same, obviously one is a fraud. What better way to figure out which one than on the pitch? Both players keep their commissioners as opposed to the star players. So we've got Commissioner Roselle. Mm-hmm. Four four two eight. Cost two hundred K. Okay. Loner, regen, decay, mighty blow, break tackle. Juggernaut, fan favorite, and the commish. Okay. Which um, is a unique skill. Has its advantage. Um, upon sending off the player, the commish can argue with the ref and have the call reversed on a four plus. Okay. There's also Commissioner Tagli Boo, 7246, 2K, 200K as well. Loner, Rules Lust. Dodge, shadowing, sidestep, fan favorite, and the commissioner. So, rules lust, representing Tagli Boo's penchant for following the rules as opposed to drinking someone dry. Any teammate on the team that hires Tagli Boo is eligible to be used for this role as per bloodlust. So, essentially, it's bloodlust right. onto anybody. And commissioner Good L, 7338. 200k loner pass block very long legs disturbing presence fend fan unfavorite and commissioner <laughs> fan unfavorite 
And then this player is so reviled for presiding over the fall of the NEF that even today fans love to boo him or throw anything that isn't nailed down. Minus one to fame for as long as he is alive and playing. <sighs> That's funny. So it's got those. It's got the uh, fun little kickoff table and all that. So it sounds like it'd be a fun event. But no, we will not be going. Maybe I'll show up and not you and then we'll go boom in your face. Sure, go for it. Then I just won't go to Chaos Cup because I've already been in the Chicago area. Sounds <laughs> like a bad idea. You think so? Yep. It's time to do something different, Steve. Nope. Why don't we have a tournament here called Chicago Cup? CC? <laughs> like that? Same exact rules, you but know the true I, championship. I don't really want to I don't really want to run it. I'm I'm okay with going someplace and just playing. <laughs> I know, it's so nice, isn't it? Yes. Wasn't it nice this weekend just to turn in your slip and walk away? Oh, yes. So <laughs> and nice. And watch other people stress over people not turning in sheets right. Yep. Or starting matches early. Yep. Or getting in their face. None of that's on me. Yeah, that's great. Um, I got a few things here from the iTunes. Ooh, iTunes. So if you're not aware, you can go on iTunes and leave us a review. And if you do, we'll read it. So this one's titled, It's Just Good. Five stars by Egerton's of Fun. A lot of times you never think about podcast hosts as real people. A lot of them sort of just sound like radio personalities or over entitled experts. But at both down, <laughs> they sound like like guys just like me who love the game and love talking about it. And then every now and then we get a glimpse into their their lives. Steve's new house. Scott's new job. I even listened to an old podcast where they talked about two tornadoes hitting their neighborhood. For me, it's just one of those shows where it reminds you of just how much fun this game is. When you, um, I think I just read that wrong. <laughs> where it reminds you how much fun this game is when you just remember it's just a game. And there's amazing stories to tell every time you play. Right. Uh, that means you should have liked this episode. Yes, I'm saying. <laughs> At least we have one fan of this episode. It sounds like... Real the... ones and fake ones. Oh. Thank God. Thanks, guys. When you only have one or two people to play with, this podcast makes me feel like I'm in another gaming group. Ooh. That that makes me feel good. As I say, it started out saying, other ones sound professional and sound like they know what they're doing. Right. This one doesn't. Kind of. Which I'm okay with. Yeah. Because we, we are. <laughs> we started out that way. First couple episodes were very, hello and welcome to Both Down. We're going to be like this, like every other radio personality. Like, oh, yeah, no, let's just, let's just do us. And, and one out of one listeners found this review helpful. Hmm. Um, so the next one is, says, I love it. It's five stars. That was the title. Um, this is by title of your sex tape. It's tight. Noise. Tight. No, no. T O I T. T O I G H T. Tight. Tight. It's tight. Nice, nice, nice. That's it. That's the review. Nice. From title of your sex tape. That'd be a fan of Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> oh, is that? Yeah. Okay, so I don't get that. Yeah, that's okay. what that's from. Okay, I thought it was a pun. Like, you know how we said don't. Put pun things in there if you can avoid it because we might not read them. Oh, okay. And then yeah. I thought this was like the title of your sex tape. So now it's a Brooklyn Nine Nine. That's a Brooklyn Nine Nine thing. thing. Cool. All right. Well, cool. I didn't get the Brooklyn Nine Nine joke, but thank you both for the reviews on iTunes. I uh, see. I've got to shout out the Charlie Victor's Coin of Corruption. Coins of Corruption, excuse me. Uh, it's a Kickstart. Wait, sorry. It's an Indiegogo. That's going on right now. It's like a Kickstarter. It is very much like a Kickstarter, <laughs> but not a Kickstarter. It's like a Mexico. So the, <laughs> it's a kind of Mexico. They have already reached their funding goal. So basically, you just go on there and order what you want. And you'll be getting it. If you're a fan of metal coins for like markers and stuff. And tokens for the ball and fouls. All that stuff. If you're a fan of that, you need to really go check this out because... They're probably going to have something you want, if not all of it. And realistically, the art is amazing. All the art, it's the same art and style as the Apothecary cards that came out. Right. So all of that is really awesome. And it's got a patch if you want and dice. I, like I said, if you're into coins and stuff, 
or even like Blood Bowl collectible stuff, this is like solid stuff. If you're not into coins, you might not like it. That's the only thing. Yeah. But I know there's a lot of collectors of stuff, but the art is nice. They they look really professional, so definitely check it out. And Duncan's a good guy, so for he, sure he likes doing all this stuff. He does a lot of work with Blood Bowl, so go and support it. That's right, and we can get more projects done. We we're one big happy family that scratch each other's back. Yeah, and then if we ever do a Kickstarter, they'll be happy to help <laughs> along with us. <laughs> um, shout outs to the guys, um, Drew Bucciacone, Tim Lyons. Uh, Chance Kirchhoff, all the guys at the Three Die Brawl for running a great event this weekend. And congrats to all the people we saw this weekend for making it a record breaking event for them. It's always a good time. It's always nice seeing people. And it always goes too quick. Always. Always. We just need to have like a whole week where we can all take off work and just do nothing but play games. I'm pretty sure everybody gets sick of me by then. Oh, yeah. I mean, probably Drew was sick of me. Before we left. Yeah, probably. You know what that guy did? He put a pile of poo underneath our pillows. Like like, like real poo? Like fake poo. Oh, okay. That's better. Like, Jen went to bed the first night we were there, and she started, she goes, uh, go look under the pillow. And I was like, no. <laughs> and she's like, no, you need to look under the pillow. I was like, if there's a big bug there, I, I'm not picking up that pillow. Right. And it was just fake dog poo. At least it's fake. Yeah, well, got that going for it. That's all right. I opened one of his toys. He'll find it one day. Ah, uh, Drew has so many unopened toys. It's almost like me. I'm pretty sure he won't find this one because it's not as important as the other ones. But right. It, but it was fun to crack open. Yeah, you gotta leave the Tron and the Yoda alone. Oh, you gotta leave those <laughs> alone. So good luck to Drew Butchikoni for finding his new open toy. Yeah. It's amazing to see if he'll find it since I discarded the package and brought it home and just put the toy on the shelf. Yeah. So last one I have, Sean Hennessy sent us an email, and he's wanting to get his team both down approved. Uh oh, this is gonna be tough. It's it's. You so, sure you want to read it to me? I could I can I can because I like Sean, but I might be making him mad at me. I could take a bet right now. Oh, I'm gonna say I don't like it. Oh, I know you will. It's a lizard man team. Mm hmm. Asterheim albino assassins. Asterheim. Okay. Albino assassins. Okay. That's it? What more do you want? Oh, I thought maybe you had like some more than just that one team. Asterheim. Where's Asterheim at? Uh, the first letter of the team name. It's an asterisk? No, I'm just saying first word. Sorry. Okay. I don't know where it is. I'm just reading Albino this. Albino assassins. Well, I don't know. Um, I guess it's a both down approved. Really? It's not like terrible. Okay. It's not what I would pick. I but thought for sure the albino assassins would be a no. That could all be like, you know, when you say it, it sounds like an awesome theme for a slam team where they're all white and pale and sticky. And they go around, they're like these white toads that kill people. And I love that. But they're lizard men, so it's... Fair enough. Um, I don't hate it, though. Asterheim doesn't sound lizardy though. But at the same time, what does, you know? Yeah. So maybe they're from a different part of the old so, world. I mean, really, it's Lustria is as far as we know for lizards. Yeah. But it could be somewhere else. I No, I don't hate it. I mean, it has potential. Okay. Um, well, there you go, Sean. Yeah, I'm sorry I shocked you by like saying I can't really find. Look, I just played a tournament, and you know how tournament teams are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and what is the new guy? What not the new guy? What is Anthony from our league playing? Did he have? He has like a horse racing name for his team. Horse on Love Gods. No, he changed his name. Oh, to it's like a phrase now. I don't remember. It's terrible. Yeah. And I told him that to his face. I was like, what? Oh, it's, it's awful. Okay. But no. yeah. albino assassins kind of cool. Okay. Fair enough. Anything else? No, that's it, man. I'm tired. Okay. Three Die Block wore me out. It really did. And do you mean the guys from Three Die Block or the tournament Three Die Pro? <laughs> um, I don't know. Well, a little bit of both. 
Everybody wore me out. It's just not, it, it's turning into like nonstop hanging out with people like 100% of the time. It's which cool. Is, which is cool. It's just tiring. So hopefully this is going to be the last episode recorded here. Hopefully, because Steve doesn't like living here. Well, I my plan is to make a studio at the new house. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if that happens and if I need to get internet and everything over there before the next episode. So there might so be next more, episode though. might be a little late. We'll see. I think you should come to my house every time to record. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's bull crap. I've been doing that for years. <laughs> You've lived here. How long have we been doing this podcast? Um, since um, before I was divorced, so 2011. December of 2011. 2011. Yep. How long have I lived here? Because that's, you know, that's six years. I think we had at least a year, (laughs) year and a half before you moved over here. So we've been doing this five years here. Have we really? You can move to the other house for a while. Okay, for only two months. No. Two months. Five years at least. I'm done. I quit. Okay. (laughs) Well, this is the last episode of Scott, and I will be back next month with Alan. I don't know. He doesn't even play. He doesn't play. (laughs) God, nobody. It'll just be me. It'll just be you. And you go Nobody wants you. to listen to that. <laughs> I don't even want to listen to that. <laughs> Can you imagine editing a podcast of just yourself? Siggy could. No, he did it good. I'm saying me and you hate listening to our voices. Oh, I'm, I'm so over that. Uh, After you? doing this for so many years, okay. doesn't it doesn't affect me Steve at all. Steve loves himself. Anyways, we okay. will see you next month. Hopefully, I'll have a new roommate. Who's a lot better looking than Steve, and Steve will not have a roommate, which is better looking than me. That sounds good to me. (laughs) All right. You guys take care and have a wonderful month of June. Goodbye. You can follow Both Down on Twitter at Both Down. You can follow Scott at Fat Finley and Steve at Kilowog2814. If you want to know if your team name is Both Down Approved, send a tweet to at BD Approved. If you'd like to email them, the email address is bothdownpodcast at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at bothdown.com or at facebook.com forward slash bothdown. All right, so uh, we went to the Braft. I mean, the, the start End of start episode. Over, start, start. <laughs>